Do you want to hire me as a scripter? If so, then check out the Discord server in the description to know more about my offer to you guys. Alright my friends, so welcome to today's tutorial video. In today's tutorial video, I just wanted to quickly show you how this boss loot system right here was scripted, okay? So this is a single script right here. Now let's get into this. So first of all, we have a table up here called boss. And this table is very, very important, okay? So the problem with boss systems in general is that as long as you do not make a complete boss system, okay, so boss from scratch, you will have this one problem. This one problem is that you only have a part, so a part of the boss system. In this case, we only have the loot system as, as a part of this boss system. And since I do not know how the rest of this boss system looks like in your game, I have to make this... Wait, there is a... Okay, wait. Yeah. Uh, since that problem, I have to make this script adaptable to your boss system, and that's the reason why I leave things or yeah, why I've set up this table in the first place. So what this table does is that you have to put a certain index, and this index has to contain the name of your boss. Okay, so when your boss is in the workspace, for example, so this guy right here called boss one. So this is just a representation of what a boss can look like. This is not a boss. This is just a representation. So just something to work with. Okay, so let's say that let's pretend that this is a fully working boss. And this guy's name is boss one. Or it can even be Luffy or Son Goku or whatever you want to call this guy. Okay, you just have to make sure that this table's index in this case, boss1, equals the name of the boss. Okay? That's the first thing. So that's the index. That's the way on how you assign, okay, this boss right here, so this one, equals, and now, the loot. So, script.boss1loot. As you can see, we are referring to this folder. Now, how does this work? So, everything which is inside of this folder now, is now loot. So every time when you kill this boss, those items inside of you are acquirable through this back, which will then spawn after this boss has been killed. Okay, that's basically what happens right here. So when we have two bosses, for example, so let's say that I'm gonna I'm gonna clone this one, so duplicate, and then call him boss two. So how would I proceed? So I would set a comma right here, and then just do the same. So index boss two, and then equals script dot boss two loot now this is of course pretty funny because boss 2 loot doesn't exist and boss 2 doesn't exist as well but you just have to pretend that they exist okay so that's so in how you how you could add multiple bosses inside of here okay so that's just to that now apart from that we have some more code to go through so as you can see we have a for i loop for iv loop i'm sorry so for iv in pairs workspace get descendants so what does this do what does get descendants do so you guys probably know get children, okay? So when you do get children, you only refer to those instances. So to those which are superficially visible to you. But what get get descendants does is that get descendants goes more into depth. So you do not even you know you do not only refer to these, but you also refer to these inside of these. So this for example, this for example, this for example, and everything which is inside of them, and everything which is inside of them, and so on. Okay? I think that you guys get what I'm trying to point out. So that's what get the sentence does. So we literally get anything which is inside of the workspace. Now, our checks right here, they check if the thing we're currently at is a boss. So how does this work? So the first check is that the thing we're currently at is a mod. That's the first thing. Because a boss is nothing else than the character model with a humanoid inside of it with one of those names inside of here okay and that's literally it okay apart from that it, it, of, it of course has some scripts to do all of the attacks but it is nothing more than a character model with a humanoid okay so that's literally what we're checking uh, right here for so if the thing is a model aka character model and this thing has a humanoid inside of it and the name of that character model is findable inside of this table because as we guys know when you want this boss right here to drop loot you have to define first of all the boss's name and then equals and then this this loot folder right here so the folder with all of the loot inside of here and when this in entry or index doesn't exist so when this equals nil then you have done something wrong okay 
Now, what happens right here is that once all of these checks have been passed, we can surely say that V, which is the thing we are currently at, is a boss. Now, this boss, of course, contains a humanoid. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to deal damage to it. Otherwise, it couldn't play animations. Well, I'm, I'm not even sure about that because I think that this animator instance even works without the humanoid itself, but that's not a topic, okay? But what we are doing right here is that we are checking whether this boss has died. So v humanoid died. So this is an event. Connect function. Now, when this boss has died, then these things right here will happen. So let's take a look into this. What happens is that we create a variable called back. Script.back.clone. Nah, colon clone. So we refer to script.back and we clone this instance. Now, what is this instance? So this instance is this yellow back you guys have seen in the giveaway video, at least I hope so. And what is this interesting thing about this back? So when you take a look inside of it, it has a proximity prompt. So you guys may ask, what is this? Okay, so this proximity prompt is literally this interface right here popping up when you come close to this back. Okay, so this interface right here tells boss loot or says boss loot take. And when I hold E, I'm able to take it. Okay, so that's all what this proximity prompt is about. And as you can see, when I click on it, inside of this properties tab, we have a bunch of properties which we can edit. Now, let's get back to the script. So we clone this back, we put it inside of the workspace, and we set the C-frame to our boss's C-frame, multiply it with another C-frame, which makes it go behind the boss and a little bit down into the floor, because otherwise it would, it, it would float a little inside of the air. Now, back.proximityprompt.triggeredConnect. So we refer to the back and then to this proximity prompt and then to an event called triggered. Now, as you guys can tell, this event happens when you hold the key, which you were able to hold, as you guys were able to see. So when you hold it for long enough, this triggered event right here is triggered. <laughs> and we receive the player who has triggered this. Yeah, right here, we have this argument now. What happens then is that once this proximity prompt was triggered, we play a tween. And what a tween does, so just to shortly describe this. So a tween changes your instance's property from one status to another status. So that's just my, my badass description of it. But let me try to emphasize this with some more examples. So let's pretend that you have a part and this part has the property of the transparency and the first state of that transparency is zero okay now you want this state to change into transparency equals one so to fully invisible now you can approach this via two ways so you can first of all go ahead and then just change the part directly from transparency zero to transparency one this would work but it wouldn't look as fancy as if you would start by going to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 until you, you uh, arrive at 1. Now, what Tween Service does is that it even makes it more fancier by tweeting this. So it literally creates the perfect transition. So the perfect transition from your first state into your second state, to your goal state. And that's what happens right here, okay? So we, we have um, called this create function of, on this tween service, of this tween service, and this requires the instance we want to tween, which is our back, and then something called tween, uh, tween, tween, tween info new. I'm sorry, and you can consider these as the settings of our tween. So what this one needs is the wait time, or the time in which this tween has to happen. So this tween takes one second. So that's uh, all about that. Now we have something called the easing style and the easing direction. You can check out all of the single easing styles and easing directions on the dev hub. So I, I mainly use linear and out. And there are a bunch of more things you can, you know, declare right here, but I don't really mess with them. Okay. But so there, there there's some stuff or there, there's some stuff called repeat count, reverse, delay, you know, so there are some more things you could check out. So I recommend to check out the dev hub on that. And the third argument right here, so inside of those curly brackets, is the goal state you want to achieve. As you can see, transparency equals one. All right, so this is the state we want to achieve. 
So what happens right here is that we want to create a tween for our back, which makes our back disappear within one second. That's literally what is right here. So there is nothing else besides that. And once this tween is set up, you can play this tween. And this is just another way of telling that the tween now goes on. Now right here, t.completed connect function. So when this tween is completed, we disable this proximity prompt and we destroy the back. So you may ask, why are you destroying this proximity prompt? That's actually silly of me, because I think I should dis I think I should disable it up here once it has been triggered. So my idea was that, um, yeah, while this back was about to disappear, you were still able to see this interface, okay? And I thought by placing this inside of here, it would fix that problem. But th but this doesn't even make any sense because this happens after the back has fully disappeared. AKA the back is destroyed. So this makes sense after you have triggered the proximity prompt. So that's just something I have come uh, up with now. Now, besides all of these, we still have some more code to go. So this is the part where this loot drop actually happens. So where you actually receive your loot. So let's go through this. Now, we set up another for IV in Paris loop. This time we call these things i2 and v2, so i2 index2, v2 value2. Uh, yeah, to not mess up with these ones right here. And we are looping through this loot folder. Now let me explain this reference to you, okay? So boss is this boss table, so this should be clear. v.name is the name of our boss, and whenever you use those brackets, you guys should be aware of that you are now indexing an entry of this table. Now v.name is the name of the boss, as you know. And if you guys know how you have how you have to set up this table, then you now can combine both things together. So we now it, uh, are trying to refer to the index's value, so to that index, which has the same name as our boss right here, okay? And since we only have one boss right here, it has to be this one. So by by Writing down this, you actually refer to this, okay? Just to make things clear right here. And by referring to this and then applying this get children to it, you get everything which is inside of here. And we clone that. So we clone each one of them. And then we put them inside of the backpack. Now, right here, we have two checks. The first one checks whether, yeah, the loot inside of here is a local script. If that is the case, then we then we then we want to make sure that that they are not disabled anymore. So it is recommended that you disable local scripts inside of or which are not really inside of your backpack, because the problem is that when they are enabled, I don't even know if this applies to the server because I think that the server has some built-in mechanism that doesn't even let the scripts run. But the main problem is that when you have a local script which is dedicated to be inside of a player's backpack, okay? But is not inside of there right at the beginning and is not disabled, then it will still try to run all of these functions or to refer to all of these variables whatsoever. And it will run into an error because its natural habitat is to be inside of the backpack. So I hope that you guys understand what I'm trying to say, you know? So because of the script not being inside of its dedicated place, and it not being disabled as well, it tries to do all of the stuff it would have done when it when it would have been inside of the backpack. And this will lead to errors because it is not inside of the backpack, you know? That's the reason why we have to keep it disabled until it is inside of the backpack, okay? And um, yeah, that's just something you have to pay close attention to. So as you can see, those scripts right here, okay, so this one is disabled, but th those are also free model tools okay so nothing i have created so this one is not disabled and this one isn't disabled either it could be that i'm currently shit talking a little because i'm not really sure about this one and i've told you I've, i even think that the server script service right here disables them or doesn't even run them automatically so i don't really know but uh, i just like to you know keep things secure right here not to take any risks so when this thing is a local script and when it is disabled, then we want to enable it again. And when this thing is a tool, then we set up another 5 in Paris loop with index free, value free, 
and we check whether the things which are inside of it are a script or are a local script if that is the case then we want to make sure that they that they're enabled as well okay and that's it with this whole thing right here so it is literally about killing this guy and then making this back appear and then using that proximity prompt to make this back vanish and to make the things inside of that folder loot folder clone inside of your backpack and that's it that's how this loot system works so it was pretty easy to script i'm honest with you but um yeah so hope that this was helpful to you guys if you have any questions then comment or join the discord server because uh you know so you can reach out better inside of my discord to me that being said See ya.